Okay, so we're talking about absolute value and quadratic inequalities. It says part two, because we already learned this stuff yesterday. Now we're just kind of reinforcing, making sure you got what I tried to teach you yesterday. So the top thing that's highlighted here says solving absolute value equations. That's like this. That's an equation because it has an equal sign in it. The next thing we're doing is inequalities, which just have like a greater than or equal to sign instead of an equal to sign. All right, so... I'd like you to simply solve that. I'm going to hit pause while you solve it. Don't forget inequalities. Once you get the absolute value alone, you just got to split this thing up into two parts. I meant absolute value, not inequality. So anyway, start by adding five and then split the thing up. See if you can do it all by yourself. Okay, so I'm back. We're adding five to both sides. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to... Add 5 to 7 makes 12. Then I split it. Split into 2x minus 1 equals 12. And 2x minus 1 equals negative 12. Then I get two answers. And I add one to both sides. 2x equals 13. x equals 13 over 2. Raise your hand if you got that one. Good. And then the other one, you add one to both sides. 2x equals negative 11. x equals negative 11 halves. So you got two answers. And that's it, except if your life depended on these answers being right. And there are scenarios where the problem that you work on in class could affect your life. Now, in this class, probably not. But as you get older and you're in a more responsible position, you're building a levy for the people that live in um, it, it right near... Oh, where's The levy broke for Katrina in New Orleans, right? I don't remember exactly. There was a neighborhood right on the edge of that. So whoever built that levy, if they did something wrong to build it so that it wouldn't hold, then to some extent they have some responsibility for what happened. So there are scenarios where lives depend on calculations. All right, so if it depended on it, you would go back and stick these numbers in. 13 over 2 would go in here. And do you get how the 2s would cancel? And it's just 13. 13 minus 1 is 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. And it works. So I double checked it. I know it works. Okay, so if your life depends on it, or if it's a test where there's only eight questions that will determine your grade, maybe you take a second and check them. All right, moving on. This looks exactly the same, but it is totally not. I split it up in two parts, and I get two answers, but then a lot of kids quit right there, and then they get it completely wrong because this has a whole extra bunch of junk to do because of that symbol. All right, would you go ahead and split it up into two, get your two answers. And these are a little harder because you have to know what to do with the two answers. I gotta switch the sign. Okay, it's a less than to start with, and then it's a greater than on that one. Okay, and then I've got add four, four to both sides. X is less than or equal to nine, and this one over here, x, add four to both sides is greater than or equal to negative one. All right, and again, people stop there and they get them wrong, and they like, didn't this just? I thought you just have two answers for these. Nope. When it says less than, there's a whole bunch of answers that will work for this. Less than or greater than. we got to figure out where they are on a number line. Negative 1 to 9 are my zones. Is either this zone, all the numbers in here will work, or are the numbers in here will work, or all the numbers in here will work. All right, so which ones work? Well, first of all, do these points themselves work? Well, it really depends. It depends on whether this says equal to or not. Because I know that 9 works in that it will give me 5. See, if I stick a 9 in here, it gives me 9 minus 4 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. If it says equal to here, then it's going to work. And I'd have a filled-in circle, or I'd have a bracket. So it says equal to, so these are both going to work. Then, how about testing the stuff in between? If I tested the number like, let's say, uh, 7. 
We're sticking a 7 here. Is 7 minus 4 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So it worked. So stuff in here would work. Now, how do I write that? We're using interval notation because that's how you're going to be tested. If you got this far, you still don't have the point yet. You got to finish it by saying negative 1 to 9, and it works at negative 1, and it works at 9. Any questions on that? Yes. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Notice this sign and this sign are different, right? This one, you use the exact same when you go on the left side of your two. You use the exact same thing as what you see, like the original problem with its original sign. But this one switches to the opposite of five, and so it has to switch to the opposite sign. All right. Okay. So here's another one that's inequality versus the next one we're going to do has an inequality. But both of these are quadratics. You know why? Because they got a little squared there. So how do you solve a quadratic? There are several ways. You can factor it if you can. If the uh, factoring doesn't work, you can use quadratic formula. If that doesn't work, you can, well, actually, quadratic formula always work. But graphing is another good way. So I'd like to review those three ways of solving a quadratic. Everybody write this one down on your piece of paper. And then solve it, set it equal to 0. You always want to do that for a quadratic. You want to get it in standard form for a quadratic, which is set equal to zero. Now, sometimes these will factor nice, sometimes they won't. If they'll factor nice, it's really quick to get your answer this fat with factoring. So I'd try factoring. Does this one factor or no? I agree, it doesn't factor. So factoring's out. Next choice is probably graphing. And uh, I, but actually, I've got some more practice on graphing in a few minutes, so we're going to wait on that one. Instead, I'd like to do the quadratic formula on this one. Just make sure that you know the quadratic formula. So, everybody, solve this one using the quadratic formula. If you haven't memorized it, you need to memorize it. You've got to just sit there and stare at it until you memorize it. X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC. Over to A. So the opposite of B. Instead of saying negative B, I'd rather say opposite of B. Here's B. Opposite of B would be 3. Plus or minus. Square root. 9. Minus 4 times 1, times negative 6, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. <coughs> I think it comes out to that, right? Okay, good. Now, if they needed an answer as a decimal, could you grab your calculator and do square root of 33? Sure you could. But if they don't ask for a decimal, if they say leave it in radical form, this is radical form and it would be done. All right, what if they had something like this, except uh, in the, the case of this particular problem, it has uh, 5 uh, one, plus or minus square root of uh, 36. Actually, let's do, let's do something that doesn't work out nice, like uh, 25 root 7 all over 5. Could that get reduced? Yes, because there's 5 in here and in here and in there. 5 goes in here once, 5 goes in here once, nope, twice, nope, 5 times, 5, okay, 5 times, 5 is 25, but anyway, um, and 5 goes in here once. And so the final answer would be 1 plus or minus 5 root 7 over 1. I want to give you one like that. Would you please reduce this one? 10 plus or minus 24 root 3 all over 12. Simplify that. Start by writing it down. And figure out what goes into all of them. There's more than one thing that could... Well, no, actually, there is only one thing in this case. 
If there is more than one thing that goes into all of them, you find, find the biggest thing. But in this case, I think it's just two, isn't it? So then you got five plus or minus 12 root three all over what? Six. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Next one is, let's say, uh, a lot of people ask me this one. Can those fives cancel or not? No. Can't cancel them unless there's one in all three spots, here and here and here. And if you're like, well, how do you know that? You can go back to a simple problem like this and say, can I cancel those fives? Just make yourself a really simple problem with simple numbers and ask yourself, would that cancel or not? No, I couldn't cancel those fives, or otherwise the answer would just be 1. And I know the answer is not 1. It's 6 over 5, which is not 1. So I can't just cancel fives like that. Could I cancel fives if they were like this? Yeah, I just said a second ago that they, I could, but let's prove it. 5 goes in here once, 5 goes in here once, 5 goes in here once. So the answer is 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 2. Should it have been 2? 5 plus 5 is 10 over 5. Shouldn't that equal 2? Yeah, works. So if you ever are not sure about what you can cancel and what you can, you can make yourself a little problem with just normal numbers and see, would I be able to cancel this or not? That's a smart way of doing it. Okay. So back to the uh, kind like this where it says greater than or equal to. They are more complicated. You can't just use a quadratic formula or some formula and get your answer. And it's two numbers and be done. This is that deal where you have two numbers but they're on a number line, like 3 and 7. And then you got to figure out, does it work in here or not? And if it does, maybe it's like this. you got to do this kind of thing. Okay, so first got to figure out what the two numbers are. So go ahead and solve this with any method you choose. Make it on a number line. Figure out the final answer is like 3 to 7 with a bracket and a curve here or whatever it is. Okay, go ahead and do this one yourself. I'll hit pause while you do that. Okay, I'll see if I can catch up to you now. Hmm. Six times one makes, okay, that's not probably not. It's probably a three and a two. So I'll probably have a three and a two. And then I figure out, okay, I want the middle turn to be negative. So probably the big one's negative. The smaller one. Probably right. Now I double check it. Outside and inside, do they make negative x? Yes, they do. So then I did it right. And then I got two answers. x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Yay. Am I done? No. Got to put it on the number line. Let's say negative 2, 3. And do they work? The endpoints, the 3 or the three and the negative 2, do they work? You can always try them if you don't know. Take in a 3. See if it works. 3 squared is 9 minus 3 is 6. Is 6 greater than or equal to 6? Yes. And why is it working? Because there's an equal to sign here. But some of you guys aren't going to remember that. So if you have an equal to sign here, it will always work. The endpoints will always work. But anyway, if you're not sure, just test them. And they both work. I can give you this other tip. It's almost always that they either both work or they both don't work. All right, next thing is I test something in between them like 0, and I test and see if 0 works. 0 squared minus 0, is that bigger than or equal to 6? No, it's not. So this is, doesn't work in here. So it works here and here, and then I give a final answer as, and I probably should put brackets this way, and then I go negative infinity to negative 2, parenthesis, bracket, union, bracket, 3 to infinity, parentheses. Raise your hand if you had that one right. It's way more than half the class. Good. All right. So is there any further clarifying? Like, like how would you do this part? Or any other questions? Okay. Then... If I had this for the middle of my answer, it can't be the answer, because the answer is in interval form, and it can't be the question. Can you figure out what the question could have looked like? Where do 
do we get these? These often come from these deals, don't they? And then it's usually like, it's not an equal to question or we wouldn't have to graph it. It would be a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to. Zero. And then x plus 1 and x minus 5. There you go. See, I could sort of figure out what the problem would have been just from looking at the graph. Just wanted to kind of stretch your mind a little bit that way. Now, it could be less than or it could be greater than because I don't know where it's shaded. But it's some sort of an inequality symbol. All right, on to this one. Solving with a calculator, zooming in on roots or intersections. All right, uh, there's two kinds. There's this kind, which is where you would set it equal to zero and graph it. That kind, you're going to not use the intersections. You're going to graph this kind, only graph the one side, and then see the roots. Could you graph both? Yeah, you could, but then one of them is like the, an X. One of them is like right on top of an axis, which makes it really hard to read. All right, so break out of your slumber. Grab your calculator. Type in this number. X squared plus, this is on your Y equals screen. X squared plus 3X minus 5. Hit graph. And then the thing I'm trying to get at here is, can you get the roots or the zeros using that second calculate function. If you don't know how to do that yet, you need to ask now how that's supposed to work. Basically, I think it looks something like this. And you should come up and get a, a little private lesson on the calculator if you're not getting this yet. It says to go, if I want the roots of it, I go to the left of the root, hit enter. Go to the right of the root, Hit enter, and then get right on top of guessing where the root is, and hit enter. Get that idea? All right. Would you grab a calculator? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, that means it's a really, really, really small answer. Okay, you got that too? Okay, so the Y is not exactly zero then. But it's really, really close. What that means is that the calculator on the graphing mode couldn't get exactly zero, but it's close enough. That's what they're trying to say. It means the answer is like 0. 0.000003 instead of actually zero. How about the x of it, though? That's the part that's the actual answer. What was the answer on this one? Negative 4.1 something. And then how about the other side? Negative or no, positive. 1.1 or something like that. Raise your hand if you got answers like that. Okay, good. Now, this is that trust thing where if you're not understanding how to do this, you got to trust me. I won't embarrass you or anything. Just come up and give me a chance to teach you one-on-one -on -one from here on out because I've taught it enough up in front. If you don't get the how to do that, the zeros thing, help. let me help you. Okay, this one is the kind where you'd graph this side and you graph this side and you see where they cross. It'll be kind of like this. You'll get a parabola and a line going through and you got to find where the two lines cross. That's called second calculate intersection. Please do that right now for these two equations. What this is going to ask you is first curve. So you get the little spider thing on either one of the two lines. It doesn't matter that this is a curve and this is a straight line. They're both called curves for some dumb reason. Yeah, I wish they would just said first line and second line. Anyway, so they get on one, they get on the other one, and then you have to get over the top of the one you want because there's two intersection spots. There's this one here and then there's the one over there. So. Otherwise, if you just hit enter, 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 it actually will give you an answer. But I don't know which of these two it would give you. Depends on where the little star thing starts out. All right, so hopefully on this one, you guys will get the same answer again. Is this like negative 2? How many got negative 2? Okay, good. And the other side was what? Negative 0.7. Can anybody verify that? 
Negative seven? Positive seven? Okay. Who got seven? Raise your hand if you got seven. Okay, thank you. All right. Any questions? Yes. They could be curves. They could both be curves. I could set up this. Uh, you know, that actually wouldn't work so good. I'd go like this. And then you'd have two parabolas and where they intersect. Okay, so as long as you know that, you know, that, that top one would be like this. <coughs> Maybe I make it like this. And then it'll flip over. And another parabola like that, and it's wherever they cross. Yes. All right. If your calculator uh, is having trouble, it's probably because you type the numbers in incorrectly onto your y equals screen, or that your window is off and it can't graph it because the window is goofed up. Um, if you're in the middle of a of a test and you can't get your calculator to work, you can always exchange your calculator for my calculator, and and we can do that kind of a thing where you you can. Uh, if your calculator gets goofed up, but if it's you goofed up because you typed it in, then that won't help it. But if your calculator gets messed up in a test, I can fix it or I can give you another one. All right. So the last thing is just a little reminder about these regressions. Remember your tiny mini project, the TMP. Just get some little data, five, five sets of data, like five little, this would be one set of data. And then put them into your calculator and get an equation for it and then make a prediction for it. That should be the easiest project in the world. Okay. Any other questions about anything? All right. So this is a pretty easy day. Um, the homework is, again, just like yesterday. So we're yesterday. Was it evens or odds yesterday? I can't remember. It was evens. Then today is the odds. Same exact thing. And instead of 28, what you did last time, now you do 27. So anyway, here it is. Here is the official write-up of the TMP thing. You don't have to write all that down, but if there's if you weren't clear on the directions for it, those are the directions for it. Some things won't correlate. You know, like you might try to get somebody's uh, IQ versus their height, and it's not likely you're going to find out that tall people are smarter. But you never know. There's sometimes they just came out with some data, kind of like this. They just came out on the news yesterday, and they said that uh, they found out that uh, females. They didn't say exactly how old the people were that they were that were tested in the study. Remember things better when they are spoken in a lower voice. They, they, they had men reading off like objects like a star, a fish, a dog, a cat. And they would like, see how many things they could remember. And they did it with low voices, with medium voices, and, with, and these were all met, read by men, and men with higher voices. And the, people who, uh, and the people with the lowest voices, there was a direct proven correlation that the women could remember it better when they heard it in a lower voice. It was really, it was interesting. I'm not making this stuff up. Just heard it on NPR yesterday. So anyway. Okay, so you might come up with something interesting on yours that there is some kind of a correlation that you would have never expected. Maybe tall people are smarter or whatever. Figure it out. All right, I got the rest of the time to work. <laughs>